the amen. Thank you so much, um, my sister. Uh, this, at this moment, I would like to give over to Pastor Butelezi to, um, to strengthen us on our spiritual growth a day. My pastor, please take over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to take this time, beloved, and greet you all in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a week um, that we come from. What a week it has been. Um, personally, I've been involved with so many uh, um, prayer sessions in light of what the country has been going through in the past seven days, plus minus or so. And through it all, I want to believe that, um, you know, it, it basically reiterates what we have said about prayer, um, that when we, when we look at our lives as Christians, when we speak of prayer, um, prayer is our spiritual warfare. Um, when we pray, we go to war. Um, if you look at what has been going on for the past seven days, our only weapon was prayer. Our only safeguard was intercession. We've been standing in the gap for the past seven days, um, you know, for, for, for those who um, have their livelihoods, you know, affected, for those who have been injured through protests, um, for those who are not feeling well, who are suffering from anxiety and depression. And this morning, I just like us to just, you know, focus on what spiritual growth means in light of strengthening the other, you know, in light of strengthening the, you know, the, the next person, in light of strengthening the neighbor, in light of strengthening somebody else other than ourselves. Now, if you look at the Gospel of Luke, the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke as recorded in chapter six and begin reading from verse 46 all the way to verse uh, 49. There is a very brief story that's there um, that I want to believe so many of us are familiar with where Jesus then says, look, if, if you come to me and you listen, um, and you do what I say, and this is so important, and I'd like you to listen to what I'm about to say. Um, Jesus says, look, whoever comes to me and, and hears what I say, and then also does the words that, that the words that, you know, you, you've heard me say, I will liken that person, and listen to this part, Jesus then says, I will liken that person um, to an individual that built a house. And after building a house, uh, the individual um, dug a foundation deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. Now, this is very, very important because Jesus then moves to juxtapose the person who in wisdom built a house upon a rock and the other person whose foundation did not have a rock. That, you know, the person's foundation was just simply, um, you, you know, out of sand. The Bible then tells us something that's quite interesting. When the Bible says to us, both of these two people built houses. The only difference was the foundation that they used. Uh, the other one used a foundation of rock. The other one chose to not have a foundation of rock. Now, this is what happened. When the wind came, it is the person whose house was upon a foundation who was secure. The latter, however, who built but did not have a foundation, the Bible tells us that that person was not secure. You want to appreciate what happens here, which is the fact that so many of us read the Bible, so many of us understand scripture, or so we think we do. Uh, but the Bible then tells us that it is not just an intellectual understanding, but it is a practical application that when we begin to practically apply um, what we have heard the Holy Spirit say, the blessing does not say that when we understand and we do that, the winds will not come, the problems will not be there, tensions and chaos will not be there. No, I'm going to reiterate briefly what I said last week, problems will always be there. But the mere fact that we have built our faith on the foundation that is Jesus Christ, the mere fact that we, we, we absorb the word, the word to us is not just something that we engage in perceptively, but the word becomes a practical application in our lives. When winds come and our foundations begin to shake, they, they are shaken, but they are not broken. Not necessarily because we are strong, because the truth is we are not strong. Uh, but what makes us uh, to be able to stand is the fact that by practically applying the word, it gives us the ability to withstand temptation. It gives us the ability to withstand fights and chaos and crisis. What does this mean in light of what we have been going through? It then teaches us that there comes a time in our spiritual walk with God, where that which we have learned about ought to be practically applied. 
And when we speak of practical application, we are speaking of understanding Jesus Christ as a living embodiment in our lives. Understanding the word that we have just read right now as something of, of practical application. This is not something that we just read for the sake of growing spiritually, but the word is something that gives us life, even physically, I dare say. The Bible then begins to say in one of my favorite parts that I just want to believe testifies to what we've just spoken about here in the New Testament, further in the book, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, you know, where the writer beautifully says, look, I have been crucified uh, with Christ. The life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who who died and gave himself up for me, which effectively then means the man who laid a foundation of his building upon a rock is the person who has been crucified with Christ. If that person has been crucified with Christ, it effectively means he is no longer alive. That person is no longer there. When that person wakes up in the morning, everything that they are, from their thinking patterns to their actions, becomes an embodiment of what the Holy Spirit would like them to be. This does not mean that the Holy Spirit ren re you know, renders them insignificant in terms of being able to apply and have free will. But it simply means that when they wake up in the morning, they offer their lives to Jesus Christ. They, 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 they offer themselves to be used for the purpose of the Holy Spirit. We, we, we die spiritually daily, which effectively means that every single morning when we wake up, we are new beings. I love, I love it when the text says, behold, the old has gone and the new has now come to life. What does this mean for you and I right now in this prayer session? What challenge do we then find as Christians in light of everything that we are going through? I'm about to give you three challenges. I wanted to actually give you five. And then I said, no, no, let me just restrict myself to just three. Um, and then the rest will do perhaps some other week, okay? The first one is this. Crucifixion, previously that is, was always a form of punishment. There's absolutely nothing holy about the cross, okay? Um, thieves were, 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 were crucified and you know, people who murdered were crucified. It is, it is in Jesus Christ being on the cross of Calvary that we begin to understand that the cross is vicarious. And by, by vicarious, we mean he died the death that you and I were supposed to die. Um, and be, be, because he died the death that you and I were supposed to die, we then begin to understand the value of life that he puts on you and I. We begin to understand the fact that we, we are prized so much, John 3 verse 16, that he, he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth shall not die, but have eternal life. That is the blessing that we have. Point number one, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is a gift of love to us. And the gift of love comes because it is selfless, a gift of love does not come because it is coerced. A gift of love does not come because it is forced. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ is a gift of love because he loves you. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, being crucified with Christ is not just a once-off event. It means that we die daily. Okay, this is quite important. It effectively means each and every single morning for you and I as Christians is a challenge. Okay. Every single morning is a challenge. And because every single morning is a challenge, it forces us to, to, in humility, depend on Christ every single morning. There is no self-sufficiency that is here. We depend on him for sustenance. We depend on him for strength. We, we depend on him to be able to walk uprightly and sober in a world of turmoil and sin. Christ is our daily dependence. It is not just a once-off event where we just pray once and, you know, one prayer will cover us. We need him daily. So that's very, very important. The first one is that the cross of Calvary is a gift from Jesus Christ to you and I. The second one is the importance of daily dependence on the merits of the Holy Spirit. The last one, which perhaps I also want to believe is my personal favorite, um, is the fact that the Holy Spirit is in working. And when we speak of the Holy Spirit in working, we are saying every single decision that you take, there is that still silent voice that you have inside of, you know, you and I, many of us call that a conscience or what have you. And I call that the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, that he's constantly there, prodding, speaking, guiding. And that, you know, the greatest mistake you can ever make is to push him away. May God guide you, may God strengthen you. In a world of, um, yeah, 
of a lot of chaos. Um, we, we have not had it easy, but God is faithful. God is still faithful. We have this uh, blessing and assurance, this word of assurance that we are giving um, to those who may be going through trials and temptations to know that God is there. You are never alone. May God guide you. May God strengthen you in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray together. Eternal Father, God, Holy Spirit, we, we recognize you as Lord. We recognize you as Savior. The past seven days have not been easy in our country, but we have seen the leading of the Holy Spirit. In a very special way, Jehovah, at this point in time, we want to pray for township economies, um, township economies, Holy Spirit, that may be struggling to regain and restructure. You have got a lot of families that are dependent for sustenance on these economies. We pray, Holy Spirit, right now for those who may be injured, who may be lying in the hospital. And in the same vein, we pray, Jehovah Jireh, for those who may be going um, through the effects of the third wave. We ask Heavenly Father that he, you know, let healing be their portion in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, Holy Spirit, in a very special way um, for those who play a protective role. Um, this would include not just our soldiers and even our police force, but even our first care workers and hospitals, that Heavenly Father grant them physical strength to be able to deal with the demands of their job. We ask Heavenly Father that you strengthen them. When they are strong, we are stable. When they are weak, we are compromised. We pray for them and their families. We ask that you may cleanse and forgive us where we have wronged you, perhaps in thought and in deed, as we continue to give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and soon coming King, we pray. Amen.